Welcome back to the table. We're going to continue on with our Tokyo Express game, uh, Battle of Cape Esperance. And this is going to be turn two, where we left off. Uh, we have one lone American task force heading into unknown trouble against Japanese task forces. One task force was revealed. It actually did contain some ships in it. They fired. The range at the time was like range 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oh, range 7. For some reason, I thought they were further apart than that when we started this. Because um, the Americans could have shot back. I don't know where I got 9. Hmm. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, weird. I... Totally missed out on that, uh, so that's something we'll have to correct going forward. They're now in range, because I thought, unless somehow I've bumped pieces between last time we played, that there was actually like a range of 9, and they were at long range. Somehow, this is like medium range, so interesting. Well, unfortunately, I've got kids, cats, and things. However, if they did shift the counters, they shifted them very neatly because they're, they're still stacked really well. I don't know, but that's okay. Uh, the only reason why that's important is, like I said, the range is 7 for American forces in order for them to shoot. And so um, that would have allowed them to actually kind of fire back. But anyway, we'll go on from that. There is one American task force. If I just shift momentarily down here, they were with this American task force and they failed their role to stay in line if you will and so they actually did a counter march and turned around so I'm hoping I can get them turned around and then head back up and maybe what we can do is have this task force attack here and then possibly this task force well this task force maybe attack or scout this group out so we'll see what we can do there uh, as far as the starting goes, we have uh, the action chit phase, which is basically put all the action chits back in the bag, which we've done. We then have the U.S. formation phase, which we're going to keep the two formations as they are. And they've already been, they kept their speed from last turn. This destroyer up front did take a point of damage, which dropped its speed from 7 to 6, but... The other slow ships in here were speed 6. They're going to stay fine. Um, I thought we had executed this turn here. Oh, I, I know why it was on there. Because not everybody got through the turn. So we kept that on there. But I'll probably leave that here. Um, actually, since this group is going to turn through there, I'm probably going to change this order to a starboard. But that's fine because that's the next thing. U.S. Movement Orders Phase. I'm just going to do it right here. That's going to be Starboard. And then this group down here. Um, I think I've got a Counter March Order. And they're going to Counter March to Starboard. So they're going to try to flip around to their Starboard side. So that's easy. Usually I just pause this and come back. But we'll just leave that rolling. Then it's the U.S. Freedom of Action phase. And that's what this little table here is, which you can kind of see. Uh, this is what got us in trouble last time. It says, all ships in formation are 11 or more hexes from U.S. Admiral's flagship. This is the flagship. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They're right at 10. Any ship in formation... Is 11 or more, uh, let's see, any ship in the formation. We're within 10, so I don't think there's any penalty. I think this is saying, and I've been thinking about this one a lot, not to really deep dive into rules, but if this entire formation was even further away, like every single ship was 11 or more hexes away, then it'd be a minus 2 to the roll. If one of the ships is at range 11 and the rest are at 10 and under, then it'd be a minus 1. They're all within 10, so there's no modifier to this. So I'm just going to roll. I do have four ships in the formation, so I'm just going to roll. I can't get a zero or less. One is the worst I can do. 
I rolled a two, thank goodness, because my fear was if I rolled a one again, basically they would get in a head order. Yeah, they would have gotten in a head order. Basically they would have gotten the opposite of what I gave them and they would have just sailed right off the board. And I didn't want them to sail off the board. And that could have been narratively anything. That could have been maybe there was a problem with one of the ships, so they're leaving. You know, maybe the uh, heavy cruiser was having some kind of problems and it couldn't properly engage. So instead of separating off just that one ship, oh, which I could have done. If I, if I knew that maybe just that I would fail my role and that group would do any weird thing that they want to do, I could have actually created like two task forces. I could have made a task force of just a heavy cruiser. That way there's a chance that one of those task forces would hopefully pass. But anyway, that's kind of a hindsight's 2020. I passed the roll. It's nothing to worry about anyway. But if I really felt that there was a chance that they would fail their freedom of action table roll, then I could have just made like two groups and you know, hopefully one of them would have followed through. Okay, then it's the Japanese formation phase, which is done. I have a formation here already set up, perfectly legal, and these the rest of these are hidden formations, so I don't have to do anything with them until they're revealed. Then it comes down to the uh, Japanese movement orders phase, and I will pause for this so I can find out what they're going to do, and we'll come back and get playing. All right, well, I'm interested. So the AI gave the Japanese player one. It turned them, so they're going north. Let's see. I guess it's supposed to be northwest. So if they're here, I think I got to turn them one more. Yeah, I just had to turn them one more. So it, it turned them to go northwest. North is this way, and it had them facing one that way. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me double check. I tried to get this, but sometimes lining these up right. Yeah, so it's northwest. So north is here. It's one hex turned that way. So they're going northwest. And then it has them doing an about face turn so basically it's like a counter march but they call it an about and they're going to go to the port so they're going to spend their turns trying to turn around uh okay i would say so far that's the only ai move i've seen that i was like oh, interesting and i gave myself that 60 degree star because i'm hoping maybe come up one or two more hexes and then turn across that way i can avoid um sabo island but bring and present broadside. And right now they are in a broadside position. And as they turn, this will give them a couple turns of broadside. So depending on when we draw a combat chit, they might, might, they might have me broadsided before I can get them broadsided. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so everybody's plotted. We do the first movement phase. Yeah, everybody. the Americans are gonna activate and do, I was worried about that second task force, but they passed their role. So we're going to go ahead and bring them onto the board. And it doesn't matter in what order I move them. Um, but they are going to get one of these here turns. So they're going to move forward one. Let me see here. Putting the little reminder that they're going to turn. But they are speed six. That's the slowest vessel there. Now I didn't put a speed mark on the Japanese over here because it's all of them are speed seven. So until something gets wounded, I'll just leave them at speed seven. I know it's speed seven, which when the Japanese move, they'll move two hexes for this first segment. All right, so we move here. One, I gotta line this up good. And that there goes, perfect. They're coming back in the fight. It's gonna take them a little while. Then the Americans moving at speed six, move up one. And like I said, I'm going to get one more hex before I initiate my turn. So they'll go. They're following. 
and then the flagship is the last one to execute the turn there. So he'll get rid of that column. And there, speed six. Then it's the Japanese move segment. And they're not, they, they're not in column. I could also have them in column. There's rules in more, I'm not going to say advanced rules. There's actually advanced rules, but in the standard rules, there's rules that will let you know when they can move in column or or not. And I, I'm not using column rules with them. I probably should. Maybe next time if I play this uh, using this kind of a advanced basic rules, it's probably, I just call it basic plus, I'll have them in column to match with the American movement because that to me kind of makes more sense sometimes. They're moving in columns. But here they go. Uh, maybe I'll just have them start moving. I'll put them, once I get them back into a column, I'll just have them start moving in column. That would be fine. Uh, maybe these other groups will have them move in column. Anywho, uh, so they go up one and turn to the port one. He goes up one and he turns one. So they have all executed the first turn of their about. So by the time they hit the end of their third move segment, they will have pretty close to come about. Because they were facing that way. Turn, turn. Yeah, that'll make them turn about. All right, then we're going to draw a bag from the baggie. It's a no combat, and that stays out of the bag. So don't put that back in the bag. That stays out of the bag. Then we are on the second movement phase, U.S. move. I'll go ahead and just move this group. Since they're both six, they each, each task force is going to move one hex during that move segment. So they come up. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and execute. Uh, yes, because that will have them miss all of that. So they're going to execute that there before I forget about it. So now they're executing that uh, starboard turn, 60 degree to the starboard. That order will come off and go back. Got the orders in here somewhere, yeah, right there. And everybody pushes up one. Okay, there goes the column. And then down here, oh, I didn't move the other task forces. Um, you know what? Let me pause. Okay, so quick correction, because I had completely forgotten about all these other task forces the Japanese had, and I was just focusing on, on this one. What I did was I just treating all of these potential task forces as light in terms of rolling on the location chart for their movement, and... Basically, they all are on a head orders at speed six, and I've turned them in their current, the facing that they needed to be according to the chart. So they're all actually going to start to converge on, on this task force. How realistic would that be given that they're trying to reach, you know, Guado Canal and, and go around Savo Island and things like that to deliver troops and supplies? might not be entirely realistic given the goals of my scenario. What I should have done, and these are things I, you know, am learning, is maybe given some objectives, you know, like they'll just keep going straight. My, go my job is to intercept them, not them intercept me. You know, um, the game itself does have several scenarios, and it kind of alludes to the fact that there will be mission rules that will dictate how they move. Maybe they'll actually try to avoid combat and move away. Uh, but I just set this up to be a potential go get them kind of a thing. But I did move them, one, because they should have moved last turn. And again, I forgot all about that. And because the American task force has moved closer, uh, most of these are now in range of the Americans to be spotted. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these three task forces, I can go ahead and check to see if there's something there because they can visually see. That's within their visual. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
seven. This task force is in visual range as well. So we're gonna pull some of these markers I have and just see what else pops up. And this one over here is definitely still out of range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh, it's even out of range for them. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna start with uh, task force six and draw one of these red markers. Remember there were a lot more markers that said zero, which I'm treating as meaning there's nothing in it. And then there was one, uh, three level ones, one level two, one level three. And I'm assuming that the higher the number, the more threatening that task force is. So for task force number six, they have a zero. So I'm taking that out of the bag. I have a spot there, I'm putting it. Yep. Then, so task force number six was a false blip. So we'll remove them from the board. And now we're gonna draw for task force five. And task force five is a zero as well. So I've gone ahead and taken that. Let me separate these here. All right, so task force five, that also was false blips on their radar. And now we'll check for task force number two. There's a chance we might only have one group there. That would be interesting. Okay, so here comes this one, and it is actually a group. And it's Task Force 2, which, let's see, wasn't the highest, but pretty high on the threat level. So let's go ahead and see what it is. So there are a couple task forces out there, real task forces roaming the board. And it's level 3. Let me find the chart I was using to roll on. I know you can't see this on the, the table there. Sorry about that. But I just got to remember. Here it is. We have a hidden forces chart. So I'm going to go ahead and make a roll. Since that's a 2, I roll a die 10. If I The lower I roll it's going to be a lot smaller. So if we roll like a one, the Americans will be very happy. They roll an eight. They're not happy. It's actually going to be a light cruiser and three destroyers. So that is a task force all ready to go. I actually have some, and I'm just drawing them at random. So three destroyers. Oof. That definitely is not what the Americans were expecting. I honestly don't think they were expecting so much. All right, I just grabbed some here at random. And I'm going to place the destroyers behind, facing the direction that the task force was heading. And then we're going to put in the light cruiser. I'm just going to grab through no particular reason. I'll grab the Ubari. It's got a lot more firepower. So, yep. Sorry. Sorry, America. America. Just have to deal. So that's two, two real life task forces for that. Oh boy, that's going to be, it's going to be a lot of shooting if that happens. All right. Uh, so that was the second American move segment. Then the Japanese are going to execute their moves. So I did have that one's going to move one. And these are all on a head orders. And um, I had them at speed six as a default until they were revealed. They do go up to speed seven. However, that won't occur until the next turn. Now that they've been revealed, we know exactly what they are. And then they can come bearing down on the Americans. So they'll move one, two, one, because they're speed six currently. Yeah, next next time around, they can move two at the very first move segment, because speed seven lets you move two in the first move segment. They're going to, yeah, they're executing their about port order. So he moves one, turns to port, moves one, and turns to port. And at this point, 
Now that they're back in a column, what I will do, I do have, there are yellow ones for the Japanese turn point, but I don't want to pop them out of the sprue. Because uh, again, I'm trying to keep this game as unpunched as possible. All right, so this will be the reminder that they'll move and then he'll do his last pivot on the third uh, movement phase and then we'll be all right as rain. Okay, so that's all the Japanese movement and then I'm going to go to the action chip pull here and let's see if there's any combat or or not. So shuffle it up a little bit and we draw. It is blank. Okay, so here comes the third move segment. So starting with the Americans, we'll go ahead and move forward one. And then these two come up. Two more destroyers. And they'll push up. Then the American task force down here. I haven't forgot about them this time. They were, yeah, we're going to get another, because they're trying to turn all around. So they move, and they turn here. I might have forgot about them. <laughs> I might have forgot about them in the second move segment because it doesn't look like they're quite turned around completely. I may have. I hope they forgive me. Okay, so Americans have moved. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the, the Japanese. So again, all on ahead. He moves ahead one. They move ahead one. They move ahead one. And they're doing an about, because that's what... Uh, the order was and this is actually the last turn for their about doing port turns oh I guess I'm gonna leave that till the last group passes through because they're in column now okay all the Japanese have moved and now we're going to do another pull from the bag here combat is inevitable Oh, well, so nothing on the third. Okay, I'm going to pause here. We'll calculate the new uh, Japanese move orders. Let's see what our range is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so not in range yet to reveal them prior to combat. Uh, but if combat is drawn, they the Japanese, I would have to reveal them. And they would be in range to shoot at the American task force, but um, no combat has happened yet. All right, cool. I'll be right back. All right, so the Japanese, uh, this this guy, they has an, an ahead order, so I'm just didn't put down a, so they're no longer in about. Uh, but it did change their facing one. So when this set of destroyers moves forward they'll turn 120 degrees to face the new facing and then we'll follow on and then they'll just continue moving ahead so they're going to move parallel with the american task force this task force they're turned um, so as this group of destroyers comes up they'll turn 60 degrees to face the new direction but they've been given a port turn so at some point along this path they're going to turn and run counter parallel to this group. So the AI is interesting. The AI doesn't know where different task forces are, but it's given them a fairly good chance of avoiding running into each other. So depending on how dice rolls go, what I might do is if in the third move segment, because you roll, I'll roll to see if they execute the order. What I might do is go ahead and execute the order for them because it does have some rules in there about, uh, you know, if the AI makes a poor decision like to, to turn them off the map, you know, be fair. What I might do is execute their order even if they fail the dice roll. I'll just execute it in the second move segment 
turn them to port so that they don't collide with their own own task force. Um, and that's important because that will affect gunnery and things like that. So this task force might cut off this task force. Now, if I really wanted to go hardcore, um, I would check the stacking rules and see if they have anything for like collisions because it's night and they're in visual detection range so they kind of know that their buddies are out there which is why I'm gonna let them turn but there could possibly be rules that say you know what it's nighttime they're shooting and it's it's rough uh, they might not know for sure that those are other Japanese who knows but we're set up um, and then the Americans Oh yeah, they don't get to do a set of orders. It's just the Japanese player that gets, or the Japanese AI that gets to make uh, new orders at the end of the third move segment. All right, well, here we go. Fourth move segment. Americans go. They're still on their advance, so they're kind of programmed in here. So they go. This group goes. And they go, and they bring up the rear, and they finally change course to keep the column intact. Then this group down here, uh, they, I'm gonna have them go ahead and complete, even though I did forget about it earlier. Um, yeah, so like this guy, yeah, I definitely am gonna try and keep them going together. I did mess their movement up. I can tell just by the way I've got the counters. I, I was not paying attention specifically to the task force down here. So I'm trying to get them back on course how they should be. My original intent was to turn them around. I now have them turned around. And so I'm looking here. Yeah. Because it would go and then turn. But somehow that would make them off by a hex. I think they should be like that. Like I said, I neglected them horribly. So I'm trying to get them corrected and back on course the way they should be. And this should do it. Um, this guy is has completed after three move segments. I, Because I skipped a move segment, I let them complete their move in this fourth move segment. And now they'll be on their counter march that I had set up for them. And then when those destroyers move forward and turn, then everybody will be back in column. I hope. So they should be fixed. They should be fixed. All right. The Americans have moved. And then the Japanese will go. This one up here, we still don't know if that's a real task force. So it's just a possible blip on the radar just going, passing through the night. This task force is heading that way, right? Parallel. Um, but he's on and ahead now, so he moves one. And then these guys came in to make their 120 degree turn to match what the new positioning on the map was. And they're good. Uh, only if they make a 180 degree turn do they lose a point of speed. So 120 degrees doesn't affect their speed. Now he's going to move one. And on a, a die roll of one, two, three, or four, they will execute the order. He rolls an eight, so they don't turn. And then this group pops in here. Three destroyers turn, turn. And they maintain their column. I didn't put the little column turn. I didn't think I'd need it. All right, that's all the movement. Then we're going to draw the action shit to see if there is any action this time. And flip it blank. Oh boy. Well, there's only two segments left. And yes, the combat is in here. I just, I just looked and <laughs> make sure I didn't take the combat out. Combat's in there. But that that's uh, all feasible. Okay, so now this would be the fifth move segment. Americans move first. So we go one. I got their order. And then those two destroyers. We know they're out there, but it's so dark, we can't tell. That's why we haven't attacked yet. They'll move one forward. This one moves. 
and this one I'll turn and execute its turn. They will now execute I want to say so badly. They will now execute order 66. But I won't. Oh, and I forgot. Gosh, I keep forgetting this other American task force. I totally do. Okay, they got to move as well. They should have moved, but I I'm horrible. All right, and now they're in their column again. And take that off. Counter march has been completed. All right, everybody is on track. So now we have a 50-50 chance of combat here. Try to shuffle these around here. And grab you. And it, it, blank. Oh, blank. All right, well. Combat is happening at the end of this turn. We are now at the top of the sixth U.S. movement phase. So once again, continuing on with their order. Ahead, ahead, ahead. Uh, then the other task force, oh. Well, I left it here so to remind myself. I'll move the camera back up. I moved the other group. But I did not want to forget this task force. They have not been forgotten. The other task force already moved them. So now we just have the cluster of Japanese. He moves his one point. They move one. And then they move up, make their turn. Everybody is now back in column. And this group moves one, one. Yep. Okay. This is definitely the more deadly of the two task forces right there. It's got uh, more destroyers. One more. The other one has two destroyers. That one has three destroyers. So. That's more torpedoes. Great. Uh, and this is, this is perfect. Well, I tell you what. I was making fun of the AI, but the AI has steered these two task forces. They are perfectly broadsided to each other. Now, combat has begun. And if I go here, one, two, three, four, five... Let's go ahead and see if there's something in, if this task force is real or not. And uh, because if it's real, they're also going to participate in combat. So they draw. Oh, it's another task force. Of course it's another task force. All right. I was really hoping it was a zero. All right. So this will be the last reveal party here. Yeah, I honestly don't think the Americans would be wise to stick around for this. They just realized they they just sailed into a bunch of people and they didn't bring all their troops with them. They got some ships left behind. All right, so I've got the uh, chart off to the side here. I'm going to roll. It's a size one, and I rolled a two, so lucky for them. That's two destroyers. All right, good. Yes, that could have been much, much worse. So we'll go ahead and put, uh, I just happen to have two destroyers right here. And they're going to face that way. Nope. Upside down, here we go. Alrighty, okay. And with combat, it's the Japanese first. So this is actually going to be quite a bit. Well, actually, this isn't too bad. So this task force here can't participate because they're blocked by these guys. So just these folks will be firing. The Yubari, I'm going to pull up my Japanese chart here. So you can look with me as we figure out what's going on. 
I'm actually going to pause real quick. My daughter got home from gymnastics. I'm going to go see how that goes, and then I'll come back and we'll see what happens here. All right, I'm going to try and explain this mess of torpedoes. Uh, right here, this light cruiser is firing at the flagship. It's going to, well, first of all, how did I determine who's attacking what? Basically, it's you go from um, your Japanese ship to the closest American target that's not obscured or out of range or anything like that. And I had several that were equal distance to this, so I just rolled randomly to determine where which ship in line it would be attacking. Uh, so this light cruiser is attacking the flagship. Then this destroyer is attacking the lead destroyer of the Americans here. And then this destroyer through random rolls is attacking uh, one of the destroyers here. Yeah, that's a destroyer. Then uh, this destroyer will be attacking the lead destroyer. Now the rules, little... Um, target priority thing says that a Japanese won't target a ship that already has two ships targeting it because you know you don't want to overkill and waste shots um, so they can't attack the lead destroyer however the line of sight goes right down the hex line so this destroyer was not blocking line of sight to the next group of ships here which are I think are just yeah they're the destroyers so they've each been given a ship to shoot at now because it's the torpedo phase uh, then it's a matter of determining is it one salvo or two salvos and and luckily if a ship is targeting one ship it will fire two salvos if it has it if two ships are targeting a ship then they will each fire one salvo so that's easy enough so we're going to start with a uh, so the this is the light cruiser uh, Yubari, yay, that was, yeah, great. Okay, so the Yubari, light cruiser, I know you can't see, the, I'm, I'm leaving this right here to look at the combat. So this actually has a center line uh, torpedo system. So I'm going to cross off the center line. It only has one salvo. I'm not doing reloads. I guess I could do reloads. I'll have to read rules on reloads. It's probably not that difficult, but it only has one one salvo to fire. If it had two, it would fire both. So it fires four torpedoes into the water. Yeah, and I didn't want to move this chart, but uh, I'll bring the chart to you. All right, so I'm looking here at the torpedo combat table. Japan, torpedo value of four. Uh, let's look at modifiers. The attacking ship is in the target's bow arc. Nope. Attacking ship is in the target's stern arc. Nope. Japanese ship is attacking at short range. One to three hexes. Nope. Um, I laid out the ships here just, you know, to keep track of targets and attack and whatnot. But they are actually going to be one, two, three, four hexes away. Uh, so they're technically medium range. So no bonuses there. U.S. ship is attack. Yeah. So there's no modifiers to the torpedo value. So there's a torpedo value of four for the Japanese player. So we're going to roll a die 10. And I'm going to roll it off to the side just because I don't want to have it bounce and mess all that up. Eight. I rolled an eight. Oh, that's swell. All right, so across, that's three hits on the flagship San Francisco. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't think the American player is going to stick around for this. <laughs> they're, they're out of here. So I look for San Francisco. One, two, three hits. Okay. I'm leaving these targets and attack markers on because when the Japanese do the second torpedo attack... They have to attack any ship that did not have anything on it, which in this case is just this one guy right here. Um, and I don't, I don't think anybody will be attacking it. He might get out of this okay. Everybody else is going to have some hits, but all right. So San Francisco's hit. Now this combat, in a way, is kind of simultaneous. Um, so this, they'll do all their return fire with no penalties associated. 
so that's good. Uh, the damage doesn't apply until the end of the turn, essentially. And since this is the last segment, as soon as we're done, then we'll apply damage and see what it looks like at the at the end of combat. Okay, so B. B for torpedoes. This is the Kagero, Destroyer Kagero for the Japanese. Destroyer Kagero. Gotta find it here. Okay, good. He's got two two shots he can do. So I'll mark off one center line. And only because there's two ships targeting the lead destroyer. So he's not going to fire both salvo. So he'll fire one salvo. Um, so he'll, in this next segment, he can fire off another salvo at somebody. He could fire it off at the Boise, I guess. Um, but that's a four as well. And that also was four hexes away. These are all four hexes to each other. So it's a medium range. And that's just basically another die roll. And then look at the torpedo value. I think I, think I get to add from D as well. Since that's next, because you, I think you add all the torpedoes going into one shot. Unless they fire both cells. Let me let me double check on that one real quick. Okay, I just looked. It says that you do steps one through three, which is determining number of salvos, things like that, for each attacker individually. Um, so B will attack, which makes sense to me because B. And D are shooting at the same ship, that doesn't mean they necessarily fired at the exact same time or from the same angles. And so um, I think I played it last game where I just added all the torpedo values. So I would have counted that as 8. And that is not uh, correct if I'm reading that correct where it says you do each ship individually. So there's four torpedoes. There's eight torpedoes going total, but there's four torpedoes coming from different angles and different timings. So that gives the destroyer a little bit of reprieve. He might survive. But again, it's going to boil down to dice rolls. Uh, the torpedoes are much more deadly than gunfire, that's for sure. Gunfire, you, you have a lot of chances to miss. This does two. There's zeros and ends. So if I don't keep rolling eights, if I roll some six and below, we're going to be okay. So let's go, this is for ship B. I rolled a four. And so I look across, it's a zero. If it's an N, then that's a no result. The attack is canceled and the ship didn't actually fire that salvo. But I rolled a, a four and a four going across to the four column is a zero. So that means the salvo did fire, it did zero damage. So cool, good for them. Then this ship here, the Teruzake, or Teruzaki, I'd have to look it up. Teru, Teruzuki. Teruzuki has one set of torps, a value of four center, so we can fire him. So this is his one shot. Oh, he rolled a 10. That's devastating. So 10 or more. Ooh. That is six points of damage on the Laffy. I'll tell you what, six points of damage, the Laffy is done. Because most of these destroyers for the Americans only had three, three points. So Laffy, he's not laughing anymore. So he's going to fire his torpedoes back. Okay, so Laffy is sunk, then D. This is the, I'm trying to read this upside down. Ama, Amat, Amate, Amatikaze. They shorten the name. And I'm trying to read it upside down. So if I go to the destroyer Amatikaze, it has two center lines. Um, but D is shooting at the forward destroyer, so it's only going to fire one salvo because that had two assigned to it already. So, whoop. But it's a value of four. That's a lot of torpedoes in the water right there. So he rolls a three. Three is an N. So he actually did not fire. So he keeps his torpedoes. 
Okay, lucky him. Then we've got E and F. Those two are attacking, I believe that's a destroyer. Yeah, they're attacking the Duncan. All right, so first up is the uh, Unagi. The destroyer Unagi has two salvos. It fires one salvo because it, there's two ships targeting that one. Uh, but it's a value of two, so that's real lucky. But I roll a seven, so seven on a two is a zero. So they fired, but didn't do anything. And then finally, F, the last attack, the uh, Naganami. Naganami has two salvos it could fire, but it fires one. And uh, I roll an eight. I think that was three points, right? Eight. Three points of damage on... Oh, it's a destroy the Duncan. But that should be enough to sink the Duncan. So, Duncan, my good friend Duncan. Yeah, three is dead as well. So those will both get a sinking marker here when we go and evaluate damage. Okay, so that's all the firing. All right, and then let me check one little thing here. I'll be right back. Okay, I was just refreshing my memory on the second torpedo salvo. So basically what happens is um, if you have multiple salvos on your ship, your ship could fire one salvo at potentially different targets. And the way the AI does that is you go through the targeting for one salvo, then you go back, you check if any ship has a second salvo, then what you can do is check to see what ships don't already have two two targets or has not been targeted and then target it uh, so basically right and then there's no penalty see like gunnery if you fire at different targets you get a penalty to your gunnery but the torpedoes are launched done differently they have like a whole dedicated crew so one crew will shoot at a ship the other crew will calculate for the other target so what I'm doing real quick is looking at my destroyers to see of the ones where I've crossed off the torpedoes who's got a second salvo they could do so like for this example i want to look here the ubari only had one so it's done okay the kagero kagero it has two so it's going to fire a second salvo and that would be uh g we got up to g and i don't have an attack or G. Yes, I do. Right here. And that will go there. And now every ship has had something allocated to it. So the first one we can double up, but then on the second torpedo phase it says ships that don't have a target. The rest of these are targeted, so that was the only one. So it's gonna get from the Kagero a, a volley. So I've already marked off its torpedo. So uh, there's only a couple destroyers left that have some torpedoes. Otherwise, they've pretty much used up their torpedoes in this first round of uh, combat. And it shoots four, and again, no modifiers. So let's see what happens. I roll a nine. God, they're just tearing the Americans up with these torpedoes. Uh, nine is four points of damage against our good friend, the light cruiser Boise. So Boise gets four points of damage. Light cruiser, light cruiser Boise. One, two, three, four. Four. All right, well, it's got some health to it. That's uh, definitely a lot stronger than the destroyers. All right, that was both rounds of shooting for the Japanese. Now I'll turn around and do the same for the Americans. Uh, the good news is the cruisers don't have torpedoes, so I only have to really calculate this kind of mess for 
the American Destroyer. So I'll be back and show you what we're going to do there for gun. Well, okay. Uh, it's a lot easier for the Americans because they only have a few ships with torpedoes. Uh, neither the heavy cruiser or the light cruiser have torpedoes. Only the Canberra, which was, if I remember right, that was an Australian cruiser that was hanging out with the with the Americans. That one has some torpedoes, but that's not the one I brought to battle today. All right, so we'll start with the Laffy. Laffy has a torpedo value of three, and it's shooting at the light cruiser, Ubari. Ubari has already fired its torpedoes, but it's got guns, so they're not very strong guns, but it's still got, it's got some firepower. And I'm gonna check here, uh, range four, well, the problem is that I did I did forget one thing. Um, these two destroyers up here are actually shooting in the forward arc of this destroyer, so that should have been they should have been rolling on the three table. They should have been rolling on the three table because uh, it's a minus one if you're shooting in the target's bow arc. Um, so that that may have made a one or two point difference for any hits on that lead destroyer, but anyway. Uh, range 4 is medium range for the Americans, and that's a minus 1. So they're rolling on the 2 column. So the Laffy is rolling on the 2 column. It rolls a 3, which is a negligible. That could mean it was a dud. That's how they work things. Like, oh, you fired a dud torpedo. Well, that's lovely. Then the B is also shooting at the light cruiser Yubari. That one is the Duncan. Uh, both of those are sunk, so they're going to shoot now. Uh, also going to roll on the two column because they it's a three torpedo salvo. Oh, I looked at the Japanese chart for two, but I got to look right here. It says first column. I have to roll a nine or a ten to do damage with torpedoes. I rolled a two. Uh, so again, six torpedoes went on their way, and they all missed. Well, you know, them's the, the breaks. Then we've got here the Farn, Farnholt, Farnholt, and it is, has not taken, oh, it took one point of damage from all that. Had, that must have been from gunnery last turn. Uh, it fires its three torpedoes. It's also medium range, so it's rolling on the two chart. It rolls an eight, which is a zero. Uh, so there you go. American torpedoes are horrible. Well, good job, guys. I think maybe later in the war they learn that torpedoes are actually pretty useful. But at this part of the war they're more of a nuisance okay and that is all the salvos they none of those have uh, two salvos or more they're just all one salvo three torps each so they don't get a second torpedo phase because they don't have any more salvos to fire and no reloads cool alright well I don't think the Japanese were worried about that one bit. However, what we do have coming up is going to be gunnery. Now, gunnery is going to be pretty much done the same way as far as the targeting goes. And so I'm going to pause here and set up all the targeting for the Japanese. Now, there's only one gunnery phase, so there's not any chance of firing your guns twice or anything like that. So it'll just be one round of gunnery fire. So I'll pause and come back. Okay, that went not as bad as I thought it would go. Again, some of this was randomly determined based on range and who already had two targets or two ships firing at it. But uh, nobody is shooting at the sinking ship, so that is a rule. They're not going to shoot at sinking ships. So the torpedoes, you know, they could tell they big explosions, so they're not going to shoot there at the middle of the formation. They're shooting at the flanks, front and back. All right, so we'll start with A. That is the Ubari. It is firing light guns, so I'm going to bring out the light deck. I did shuffle this last time. 
I have the gunnery. I'm just taking the current gunnery card and then placing it on the bottom face up so I know, you know, there's a shuffle, a reshuffle in here. So I guess I don't need to do that. I just put it in there so I know if I ran through the deck to reshuffle. But there is a shuffle the deck card in here. But uh, this is broadside and we are range four. Range four for gunnery. I think that's medium range. Yeah, medium range for gunnery is four. All right, so uh, this has got 30 gunnery factors, but they're using their light guns, and they're shooting at the, this is the flagship, I think is the, my heavy cruiser. So they're shooting at a heavy cruiser. All right, so here we go. Light guns, heavy cruiser, nothing. Okay, boom. I can take that off because there's no multiple attacks with that. So that will just help to declutter as I go here. All right, B. That's this destroyer. It's also got light guns. And it's got a total of 15 gunnery factors. So we flip it. So um, 15 across at medium range. Nothing. So lots of shells firing, but luckily nothing more coming. Woo! That's good for the Americans. They suffered a lot under those torpedo attacks. That's victory points in the Japanese pocket. Oh, and I was thinking about the torpedoes. So even though there might be one or two more salvos floating around there between these two task forces of Japanese, that Japanese task force still has a lot of torpedoes so um, yeah the Americans in for a rough ride okay that destroyer has 20 and it is shooting at the light cruiser at the light cruiser Boise so 20 20 gunnery factors at medium range against a light cruiser nothing so again the range is helping out a lot. Uh, you know, somebody might say, I forget what the range is on these hexes. So they technically might not be far apart in terms of daylight gunnery. But it's nighttime. Had an interruption there, but I'm back on track. Had to remember where I was. Had a, had a call. Okay. Uh, I think I bumped that. I think that's there. Yeah. All right. So we're on the D. So we've got a destroyer now. This destroyer's got gun value of 15 as well. It is shooting at a light target at medium range. So, well, that does a little bit. Nope, does nothing. So gunnery of 15, medium range against the destroyer, zero. Oh, man. The American player is sighing big, big relief. All right, but we got a couple more to go. Lots of firepower coming. Now, these are destroyers. These are further out. One, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's only five. That's also, it doesn't become long range until, I was looking for the range chart, eight or more hexes. So it's also medium range. And that is also a full broadside. And it's only eight. Only eight gunnery. Okay. So that's eight gunnery against the destroyer. So that's nothing. All right. Well, cool. <laughs> that's good. All right. But now this one is shooting extra. Let's see. I don't think it's going to be quite eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it was seven hexes, so it's just shy of long range, but it is medium range. Nothing. So that's a lot of gunnery. Hard to believe. That's a lot of shots. I, those torpedoes are absolutely devastating. Historically, I don't know if a person could say historically that you would get similar results where it was torpedoes that did most of the work. It could be. But that's a lot of gunshots going out that are not hitting or doing anything. Okay, I'm going to pause, set up the American targeting, and then we'll roll uh, or check for damage. 
oh, you know what? Uh, these guys are sinking. Oh, yeah, they don't get to participate. They're sinking. They're in the process of sinking. Uh, but that, yeah, they get marked with sinking. But I think that apply. Oh, I just had a had a f meltdown in my brain. I th let me check on that real quick. Okay. Well, I might have made a mistake with the sinking ships here, since sinking they don't actually sink until they get the uh, terminal stage at the end of the turn. So I guess they still are valid and could still shoot and whatnot, but they're gonna sink. It's just that. After this combat is done, then the rest of the turn, all they could do is move. So I guess because combat is kind of simultaneously, they would have been eligible to be... Well, they already had a bunch of torpedoes being shot at them. Uh, but they could have been eligible targets for gunnery. So I think they do get to do their gunnery. They won't actually be sinking until we finish this turn. Uh, and then after this combat segment, if they didn't sink, they would be affected by all the other stuff that's happening to them. So I think they're going to get to shoot because all of this is happening right now. So I'm just going to add on some targets for them real quick. Uh, so we got a D. D will attack. We'll just spread it around here. And then E will go ahead and have you fire here at this top guy. Oop, got it backwards. So I might have messed that up just a little bit. Got excited because they were they were sunk. I was like, oh, they're sinking. But since combat simultaneously, they would have shot. I think they have torpedoes. They did. They fired their torpedoes. So technically, yeah, they would do their gunfire too. Uh, if they had any damage prior to this segment, that would affect their gunnery. Uh, for example, here though, this one, the Farnhalt, it had some damage prior to so it's going to have a shift on its gunnery these guys had nothing until the torpedo hit so they're all at full strength after this combat segment then their damage takes effect so they're going to fire they're going to get to shoot all right let's start with a so a is a light cruiser uh, it's the boise so it is 13 gunnery points i've got a light cruiser deck here because that is a light cruiser and let's see it's shooting at a destroyer at medium range okay so we had 13 so that's above here the 12 wow light cruiser gunnery is great all right so that's 13 and it's a medium range destroyer that's three points of damage against the Amatakazase. Let me get the Japanese charts out. Uh, oh, that one has four. Okay, well, good thing there's two things shooting at it. So I mark off three. Now, if that one doesn't sink, that one's going to have a reduction of speed of three. All, all kinds of bad stuff happen to it if it doesn't sink. Okay, so light cruiser done B heavy cruiser against their light cruiser all right I got a deck for that uh, again medium range and the heavy cruiser's got 12 gunnery okay let's flip it 12 against a light cruiser only one point of damage oh that was not a good felt like the light cruiser did better but there it is Okay, one point of damage against their Yubari. One. Oh, it only has three hit, but that's a very light cruiser, so that was actually a pretty good hit. That has a reduction of one to everything. All right. Okay. Now, the next combat, because the San Francisco did take damage, that's when the penalties were appear. So currently, this was all happening right now. Okay, so B. C, a destroyer. Okay, so this is light guns. That's 16 gunnery factors against a destroyer at medium range. So that would be right here on the 15, one point of damage. 
Well, they're doing pretty good. We're pulling better than we did for the other way around. All right. So, who do you shoot at? That's one point of damage on the Teruzaki. One. And that has a lot of hit points. That's got more hit points than the uh, Yubari Light Cruiser. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. So, C comes off. Oh, and I should be flipping these all to their fired side. But, um, yeah, that's a lot. So, we'll leave it. Because they're about to flip back over anyway. D. The Laffy has 16. And it's firing at this guy here. So, 16 gunnery factors. Rolling on the 15. Two points of damage against the Kagero. Two against the Kagero. Finding it. And that did some damage to the Kagero. Alright. So on the next turn when we do formations and orders, we'll have to recalculate speeds because that will affect them. Alright, D is done. And then we'll take a look at E. E is also 16 gunnery factors against uh, another... So here we go, light gunnery chart. Nothing. All right, that's what I was used to drawing. And that is all the gunnery. Well, that's interesting. So, ineffective gunnery for the Japanese, more effective gunnery for the Americans, uh, but devastating torpedoes for the Japanese player. But now they're almost out. And I bumped it again, but I still have one task force off here to the north that we still have to reveal to see if there's anything there, which would possibly bring more torpedoes. All right. Um, so after the combat, we would do the damage effects phase. What I do here on the charts that I track is I put a little line right here. So I know right at this point, this is now where they currently stand. So we've got some damage here. So if I look at this ship in the future, so if the Kagero has to do combat, right, and they take their simultaneous damage or whatever, I know that there's a two penalty and a reduction of speed of two. And he's fired both of his torpedo salvos. So that ship's pretty much out of the fight. The Terazuki only took one point. It's still, that doesn't do anything for it. And Yubari is down a damage point, And the... Uh, Matakaze is also down it's three. Reduction is three speed and would have three downshifts on the gunnery. So yeah, a couple, couple big hits there. The Americans are a little more worse off. The San Francisco has one damage point. So that's minus one on gunnery, minus one to speed. That will bring the overall speed of the group down to a five when we get to the next turn. And then the Laffy and the Duncan are sunk. Now, because this was the last movement phase, this is also going to be um, where the Laffy and Duncan come off. They're gone. They sunk. Normally, if this had happened earlier in the turn, they would have continued with the current orders and speed that they had all the way to the end, but that was the end. So they, they sunk. So they're gone. The Farnholt had that one point of damage, which I did forget to drop one, but I think he missed anyway. Uh, and then the Boise. So I'm going to have to do better at remembering to check my chart and damage level. The Boise took four points of damage, but that only dropped his damage level by one. So, yeah, the ships themselves are still in fairly good condition, except for the two that sunk. Uh, so we'll put these back in their hex. This is where I'd flip the counters back over as well because we would do counter adjustment phase and that's where we would turn all these from fire to... because there's a chance that you might have some that fired and some that didn't fired. But in the basic game that we're playing, it really doesn't matter. In the standard game, it might make a difference for the rest of the game, maybe for spotting because, you know, Ships that have shot might be easier to spot, 
but in the basic game it doesn't make a difference so I just don't bother flipping them and uh, there you go I have some more ships that uh, I got another task force coming up so if I lose some of these which I did I got reinforcements coming uh, but that's how we look right now. The Japanese are still pretty much in the fight just fine. We lost two destroyers so far. Yeah, this is rough one. Uh, but that'd be the end of the turn. So all of that for the first turn. Second turn. This should be turn two. This will be turn two. So that was turn two. First bit of combat. Lots of torpedoes in the water. And they, they did their job. All right, thank you for watching. Give me a day or two. We'll put up another turn and we'll see how that turns out. This might not go very long if we take, continue to take some casualties here for the American task forces. All right, thanks a lot. Talk to you later.